what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified. It's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Never be put to shame. Then it goes on to say, as the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him, verse 12, for there is no difference between Jew or Gentile, the same Lord is all Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We have these incredible, incredible promises. Now listen. God didn't kill all those people in Joplin, Missouri. God didn't take away your job. God doesn't want you to go through all these things. God loves you so much. And he sees that, you know what, all this is so temporary. What matters is eternity. That's what matters. God knew that. And he said, you know what, I see all this death and destruction that's happening to you. I know what you're going through. I'm going to send a way out for you, though. I'm going to send the only thing that can provide you a way out. My own son. God doesn't want us want death and destruction. He wants to give us life. The most fundamental life we can have is eternal life with Him. It says, if you believe in your heart that He, he raised Him from the dead, and if you say it with your mouth, if you say it with your mouth, you'll be saved. That's what he says. I can't change anything. I can't say to you, here's why your baby died. I can't say, here's why those people were killed. I can't say why to that mother this happened to your child. I can't say to the other parents, here's why your son was driving the car that killed them. I, I can't give a reason for it. But I can bring hope. And I can say, I can't see past this, but I can tell you this. God has a plan to prove. All things do work together for good. If you will just give your life to Christ, He can bring good from the worst kind of things you can imagine. So I'm going to extend an invitation. We've done this before. I'm not going to make it easy. I'm not going to make it easy. It says, if you'll believe in your heart and confess it with your mouth. If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, if you've never made the God your God, if you've never said, you know what, I am a sinner. I have my one or two things, and I have more than that. And I'm in need of forgiveness. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. And I want you to live inside of me. I want to give my heart to you today. I believe. If you want that to be, this to be the first day of the rest of your life, then I'm just going to simply ask you to do one thing, right where you're at. I'm just going to ask you to stand up and say, I believe. And you sit right back down. And I'll lead you in a prayer later with everybody else. But if you want this to be your day, right where you're at, just stand up and say, I believe. Anybody? I believe. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody else? Anybody? This is your moment, and this moment might not come again. Anybody else? Praise God. Anybody else? Anybody else? For those that said, I believe, I'm going to ask you to say a prayer. Are you ready? Just say this prayer out loud. We're all going to pray it with you. Okay? And in this prayer, this is just you telling God what you just told us. Everybody say this with me. Lord Jesus, I come before you now. I know I'm a sinner. And I know I've messed up. And I know I'm in need of forgiveness. I'm asking you right now to forgive my sins. And I am declaring in front of the entire world that you are my God. I ask, 
I ask you to come live inside of me. I give you my life. I praise you. And I worship you. For you are my God. From this day forward, I am a new creation. The old has passed, and the new has come. I belong to you, and you live in me. Amen. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to close with this. We're going to sing a song here to close. <laughs> and I know we might not be the Presbyterian the buffet today. I'll get you out of here next time. But I want this, this is a story. There was a guy named Horatio Spafford. He was a wealthy Chicago lawyer with a thriving legal practice, a beautiful home, a wife, four daughters, and a son. He was also a devout Christian, a, faith, a faithful student of the scriptures. His circle of friends included Dwight O. Moody and other famous Christians. At the very height of his financial and political success, Horatio and his wife Anna suffered the tragic loss of their young son. Shortly thereafter, on October 8, 1871, the Great Chicago Fire destroyed almost every real estate investment that Spatfield had. In 1873, Spatford scheduled a boat trip to Europe in order to give his wife and daughters a much-needed vacation and time to recover from the tragedy. He also went to join these others at a big evangelistic uh, event in England. He was all set to take this trip to England, and his family's going to have a big vacation. But his plan was he had to stay behind and finish some financial affairs. So he sent his wife and his four daughters out ahead of him to England. He was going to follow a week later on another boat. As tragedy would strike, the boat collided another boat out in the ocean. His four daughters were killed. His wife survived. A week later, he has to board the boat to England to go meet his wife. And as he's on this boat on his way there, they came and get they came and got him out of his place there in, on the boat, the ship, they said, we need to come up here. This is where your daughters went down in the ocean where they were killed. And he sat there and he looked at the ocean for a long time and he just sat there. And if you have kids, you know what that had to have felt like. It's, it's, it's unimaginable what it felt like. But in the hour of his greatest questioning, in the hour of his greatest need, he sat down and he wrote this song. And here's what he wrote. When peace like a river attends my way, when sorrows like sea bells roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say it as well and as well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet and trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not the part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall become sight, the clouds will be rolled back like a scroll, the trumpet shall resound, and the Lord shall be sent, and even so I will say it as well with my soul. And the goal, guys, isn't that we find a way to get through things. The goal is in whatever God brings our way, however painful it may be, however many questions it may raise, that we are able to still stand before him and say, I don't understand. And the pain, Lord, is almost unbearable. But even so, you are still my God. And I still bow my knee to you. And you are still my Lord and you are still my Savior and I still belong to you. That's the response. Let's stand and sing. When peace like a
And may he give you a week filled with hope, a week knowing that we're not just a people for time, but a people for time and eternity. Go in God's grace and God's peace.